two emergency podcasts in back-to-back nights. Dude, I don't ever want to um, hear complaints about me not doing podcasts anymore. <laughs> Let's talk about it, bro. Let's get into it. It's another emergency. Another <laughs> emergency. I don't know if my heart can take it. My blood pressure is sky high. Ever since yesterday, we found out Chad Baker Mazar was, was no longer on the Aztecs. But today we have a football and all sports emergency. So it's the Sons of Montezuma podcast. It's Mateo San Diego. Oh God, and of course, warrior. I'm joined ah. with my football chapter here. We got K5 James. What's going Yo, on, James? what's up? What's up? What's up? And of course, Dirt Ball Dan is in the building. What's going on, man? What up? Yo, 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 yo. Okay, right, so, so I mean, the Chad Baker, that emergency is, it pales in comparison to what, what happened to today, which was absolute chaos. You guys got your wish. You guys have been saying it for over a year now that all you guys wanted was chaos, chaos, chaos. And now we got it. USC and UCLA uh, together make the big decision to leave the Pac-12 and join the Big Ten. It's something that I really, I didn't think it was actually going to happen. Not now, at least. But James, you were saying, look out for the Big Ten's TV contract coming up. That was the big one in our last episode. That's the big one you said to keep an eye out on. And we're here, I guess. We're early. Yeah, man, this has been in, I think I kind of talked about it when we hit on the like conference or not conference, excuse me, the, the college football playoff. And I said, that was kind of like a battle between Fox and ESPN. Well, this is like another, another war front basically that they're fighting is um, Fox is basically the big 10 and ESPN is basically the SEC. So the SEC made their first shot off the bow by taking Texas and Oklahoma And this is kind of like the Big Ten's response, Fox's response, like, all right, we're getting USC, UCLA. And uh, I think there may be, to me, the the next domino to go is uh, Notre Dame most likely going to the Big Ten. Because I know they they have the grant of rights for their non-football sports with uh, ACC. And I heard like some expert, I saw some expert on Twitter say that was worth like about a hundred million dollars or something like that to, to like buy out of it early. Um, but they're talking about the big Ten's new contract being in excess of a hundred million dollars a year yeah. per team. So that they would just lose one year of revenue for their TV contract. I think they could overlook that for, you know, 10 more years of making a hundred plus million dollars a year. I mean, Notre Dame has always felt like a natural Big Ten team anyways, right? Even though they, they haven't been there. They're in yeah, Indiana, that, so it's like you're right there in the middle of that whole, that whole region. That was kind of like one of the earlier beginnings of this realignment stuff is the Big Ten added Penn State, and it was a move to try to, like, force Notre Dame to join. Mm. But Notre Dame kind of said back then they were like a power power, like, you know, national multiple national titles and stuff. I mean, they're still a power now, but. They're, they were more powerful back then in, in terms of their, their standing in, in the, uh, like the movers and shakers of, of making deals. And um, that was kind of like the Big Ten's way of forcing Notre Dame to join as they got Penn State to leave their independence and go. But uh, it didn't work, obviously, and they, they remained independent. And they've kind of been rebelling against the Big Ten ever since. But I think that it's reached a point now where like the money for the SEC and the Big Ten is so big that – Notre Dame kind of, I think their AD, somebody quoted their AD earlier today on Twitter that uh, remaining independent and going into the future is not sustainable. So I think they're probably the next domino to fall going to the Big Ten. Is James finally done talking? (laughs) (laughs) The the only reason I I got breaking news right now. Oh, shit. Multiple sources tell LA Times that no other Pac-12 members are expected to be added to the Big Ten at this time. (laughs) At this time. At this time. Yeah, that's what I think. I think the next domino to fall would be Notre Dame. And then they got to find somebody else to, you you know, they always got to have even numbers, it seems like. So if they add Notre Dame, there's got to be one other team. And that could possibly be another Pac-12 team. 
But yeah, here, here's the thing that's been kind of cracking me up all day on Twitter is everybody makes it like a fait accompli that, you know, the Big 12 is just going to poach all these teams from the Pac-12, the, the leftovers. Yeah. It's like, like what? Look at that lineup of Big 12 teams that are that are going to be the Big 12 going forward. Well, What's James, the- I think most people are talking about that. If another group got went to the Big Ten. OK. Like, you know what I mean? Like, say you lose Oregon and Washington to the to the Big Ten. Now, if you look at the two conferences, and you probably think, look at, um, I think the Pac-12 still has a better brand, even if they lost Oregon and Washington, because you still got Cal, Stanford, Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, and Colorado. It's right. not like there's a, there's a bunch of big names in the Big 12. They got the, what's the biggest name? Oklahoma State. Iowa State, <laughs> but there, I think like well, well, when you look at Colorado and Utah, there's some regional fit. There's probably even some, you know, I mean, Colorado has history at the Big Twelve. Um, Utah's there, and I think like Arizona and Arizona State. There might be some people that think that their culture fits more in the Big Twelve than uh, Pac-12. But I don't know. I think it's actually gone the other way. I know they had. I think each team had a coach that tried to force their emphasis for recruiting in Texas. And both times from both schools, they failed. Like they were a big disaster. I, I forgot it was like Makovich was one at ASU. I want to say. Um, anyway, and they all they always go back to California. Like we talk about, like how many kids on those rosters, U of A, ASU, Colorado, Utah, are California kids? Probably what, like 50, 60, 70 percent of those rosters are California kids. And you're telling me they're gonna disassociate from Cal, Stanford possibly San Diego state and go join those teams in Texas and Oklahoma. And never mind that they've got another competitor now with Houston getting called up to the big 12. So I, I just, I don't see it, man. I don't see that they're everybody's a lot of the pac 10 fan pac 12 fans are just kind of like the sky is falling kind of thing. So of course I expect them to kind of react like that, but like the pac 12 brand is still stronger than the big 12, even say they lose Oregon or Washington, or even both, like both, it would be more of a conversation. But if it stays together as it is now, minus USC and UCLA, it's it's a stronger brand than the Big 12. Okay, forward. okay, so that being said, then, we can't have it both ways, right? So are they, are, are the Pac-12, is the Pac-12, can they overlook San Diego State to add and pull Big 12 schools? Maybe a Oklahoma State, maybe a Texas Tech. Um, if, if you're thing. saying if the, if the brand is so much better and such a better opportunity, um, maybe does San Diego State then get jumped by, you know, a, a traditionally more impressive school, I guess, in football? I think it's possible, but I think now there's a big hole in Southern California when it comes to the Pac-12. I think they have to fill that some way. Like there's no Southern California recruiting trip for all the schools now. Oregon, Washington, you know, there's no, they don't have the game in L.A every other year or every year. So that's like a big deal they got to replace. And like the Arizona schools, they want that game in Southern California. You know, it's not LA, but you know, they can kid, tell those kids from LA to take the, they can pay for their two hour drive to go down to watch them play San Diego State. So I, I think San Diego State provides something that they don't have now and it fills a hole. I think I could definitely see them adding Houston. I think Houston is a bigger deal to the Pac-12 now if they want to try to go East more but i don't see them adding byu because they, they, they don't they're like they're so culturally you want to talk about culture shock you know that's a, a big opposite diametrically opposed culture let's get into that a little bit because there's a couple scenarios that are floating out there right so let's kind of get your assessment on how realistic those can be because you're at you're asking whether the pac-12 can add on big 12 teams and everything i'm seeing is a lot of people saying well they should just merge the Pac-12 and the Big 12 should just merge, take the best of the best. And, and But that's so much easier said than done, especially going into what you're saying. The Big 12 just added BYU, a very, very different cultural, political university than anything that's in the Pac-12 right now. So, I mean, is that merger possibility? Is that even uh, seems a little far fetched? Can you guys see Berkeley being in the same conference as Ken Star University? <laughs> Can you see yeah, that but, conference I mean, with Baylor? <laughs> but you thought um, USC would be in the same conference as Rutgers? I mean, 
They're, they're Let's not, be real. This world is crazy right now when it comes to college football. That's it's just like a, a, geog- a geographic thing. thing. Yeah, that, that's just a geographic location. When, you're, when talking you're talking about, about like the president of Berkeley sharing a, a meeting room with the president of Baylor, bro, that's like that's like a, a MAGA guy sitting in a room with like a, <laughs> a Bay Area congressperson you know like that that's that's uh that's crazy that'd be like lauren bobert sitting in a room with freaking nancy pelosi dude. <laughs> <laughs> i mean so ucla I, is going to a pretty conservative area somewhat i mean but those, big, they're all big like, 10 is very different though than yeah, big, the big 12 10, they're all i mean indiana is ultra pretty ultra old school like conservative you know and that's yeah, and yeah. that's a big placeholder in in the in the big 10. Look, what you're describing though is basically the bottom line and that's the dollars and, and yes, nothing that's what further, I'm trying to say. there's nothing that brings together political ideologies like money yeah. right so it doesn't matter what you believe what they believe what you stand like if the money is right then it's going to be right i don't think that necessarily is the case with that merger idea though i i think there's still here's too a, here's much the issue here's why i think it wouldn't happen right now or happen for a while i don't think the Big 12 or the Pac-12 would be the first one to go to the Super Conference. I don't. I think they're going to be more reactionary. It's gonna. It's gonna be when yeah. the Big 10 takes you know a few more more schools from the Pac-12 or somehow they get to that 20 school limit. Now, once teams get to the 20 school limit, then it's like you're taking who you take. We're not gonna. It's not gonna worry about you know ideology or political. To be honest, spectrum. I think uh, I don't think we're going to hit the 20 school mark until the grant of rights for the ACC expires or gets close to expiring. So that's like it expires wow. in like 2036. But I think you can exit in like 2032 or 2034 where it not, won't cost so much. So I don't see the 20 team mega conferences coming till then because the SEC, there's really no one right now for them to grab until schools like Clemson and North Carolina and you know those kind of schools come free. And that won't happen until the ACC's grant of rights expire. So okay, what are so we realistically start. looking at, Dan? Because you bring that up. You bring that up, the, the 20, 20 team mark. So, I mean, are we re- realistically looking at three super conferences of 20? I mean, it, people think it's going to be the two. It's, they think it's going to be the SEC and the Big Ten. And then whoever. And then it's like you're fighting. You know, it's yeah. right now we're. I mean, if we get to Pac-12, we're going to be so team Pac-12. We're going to be so anti-Big um, 12 for sure. We're not going to – that's going to be well, – that's going to be our rival. If the Big 10 and SEC is a rival, our rival will then be the Big 12. Is there any scenario where Pac-12 stands pat? You asking me? I'm asking um, both of you guys. Okay, I – I don't see it. I, I think they've got to fill that hole in Southern California and then add a new market, I think, because they're losing, you know, a mega market. So they've got to add market somehow. Um, so uh, I, you know how, like, they think, like, a lot of schools think they were talking about this with the Big Ten. They do numbers, right, to see if Oregon would cut into that 100 million that each school is going to get per school. Now. You know, the Pac-12 has to see if SDSU would add to that TV contract. That's coming up, too, if, if they're going to add to it or, or not. See, they could take a longer approach due to their situation like the Big 12 just did. The, those four schools that the Big 12 just added, they didn't improve. They didn't improve the conference by their, like, by their value, you know, enough to make sure the other team's payment didn't go down. But they're betting long term that they, they will eventually become now that they have the branding behind them and everything they'll improve and they'll improve their own value and they will in long term and that's the way the the pac-12 has to look at it i mean it's possible they don't look at it that way and they they look at it pragmatically like you do right now um so in that case no san diego state won't improve the value beyond what they're what they would bring to it but if they look long term adding san diego state having that southern california market that keeps arizona arizona state happy because they want those trips to southern california that keeps Utah and Colorado happy because they want a team that's closer. Intrinsically, they, San Diego State could add a lot of value, but you know who knows? They're, they're, these are presidents making these decisions, and you never know what a, a university president is going to consider 
they may still be hung up on the, the state school thing, even though at this point, it's just Cal Berkeley that have a problem with that. Okay, one more thing. Because when I asked you that question, I don't expect them to stand pat. And, and I just wanted to bring up this point is they can't stand pat because then they're one raid away from the conference basically being done, yeah. right? They need to add a buffer. They need to have add some schools that if Oregon or Washington go, there's still a conference, you know? Um, so that's, I think that would be my argument against the possibility of the Pac-12 standing pack. But, you know, what do we know? We're just... Yeah. We're just a bunch of knuckleheads talking about sports. <laughs> <laughs>This episode of the Sons of Montezuma podcast is brought to you by our online shop. A big thank you to everybody supporting the shop this past few weeks. Our new summertime styles have hit and they are hit. So all the trucker hats that are perfect for the beach, our beach towels, our swimwear. We got plenty more t-shirt styles coming the closer we get to football season. And of course, more player NIL jerseys on the way. So a big thank you. Definitely check out Sons of Montezuma zuma.com slash shop i mean dude first of all I, this is so much more fun even than like recruiting you know <laughs> i love this stuff this is like the best stuff to talk about uh, because and look at at first my day started off good you know i was pretty excited oh this is what we want you know and then you start reading tweets and you start reading message boards and you start reading this thing and then we're thinking oh then i start to go Oh shit! Well, Arizona and Arizona State maybe one of the big twelve, you know, or whatever. And then you start thinking, "Damn, dude, we just can't catch a break." And then you start reading message boards. Oh yeah, San Diego State is never getting out of the Mountain West, you know. <laughs> you know, it's but dude, this is the time. If there was ever a time, this is it. And I look at you know, JD has been great for San Diego. Yeah, San Diego State. He's made a lot of things happen, but him and Adela. Uh, Adela, probably more. You got to be able to schmooze. You got to be able to mingle. You got to be able to play the game with the big wigs, and you got to get them to like you. And you got to you got to you got to create um, political alliances. This is a test for them. I'm not sure JD has it in him. I'm not sure if Adela does, but you know, this is something. This is the biggest. This is the biggest opportunity that San Diego State has had to reach. Not the same Power Five conference, but to get out of the Mountain West and move into a better conference. It's a it's a better fit culturally. The Pac-12. Yes, I yeah. That's another thing I was thinking. Like, it'd just be cool to like, be, like we're West Coast teams. Like we're not going to Wyoming, you know. Uh, yeah. Even yeah. like we're not we're like part of like our people here, and you know, that's what was important to me. Like our basketball gets to stay on the West Coast. Like we get to like it's just. You know, it's, I think it's a, I think it's a really good opportunity to be amongst uh, students and players that are more similar to SDSU. Yeah. Miss De La Torre needs to be in uh, San Francisco like tomorrow. <laughs> yes. I mean, she really does. Like, I know, I don't know if she has it in her. I don't know how much she knows about, I you always feel like, you know, she's, when she came to San Diego State, she got the social issue, you know, she got a bit bad stigma, but this is a chance to, you know, you know, make some things happen. And I only think, first of all, it doesn't, it shouldn't take much. You know, I think it's a pretty easy sell. Yeah. Now, Pac-12 may have some other candidates that are, they're interested in, but do you think, if you got to think, like my, uh, like James says, if Southern California is still, they want a piece of it, yeah, you have San Diego. And you know what? And you know what? Look, at L.A. is even more up for grabs. What? So L.A. all of a sudden is going to be a Big Ten area, right? <laughs> like all of a sudden now it's Big Ten or San Diego is going to be Big Ten because they thought USC and UCLA held all the cards in San Diego. So what now San Diego's be Big Ten? I don't know if I buy that. So I think I think both San Diego and even L.A. Orange County are, are up for grabs. Kind of like what a blessing in disguise playing those games in Carson was for a couple of years, huh? Getting the name up there in the, the L.A. general area for a while. 
I mean, that might be a little bit of a reach, but no, I mean, just, you know, just open some eyes that never really would have paid attention to San Diego state before maybe, but Did um, LA Times even cover them up there. Yeah. They, had they were talking about they had how the best team in LA is from San Diego. You don't remember that article they wrote? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. That was TJ Simmers or whatever that guy's name was. TJ right? Simers. Yeah. <laughs> So let me ask you guys this, though, because, you know, you look at a lot of this shakeup, like some of those examples of the past where like a Nebraska, they left and decided to leave for bigger money, bigger opportunities in the Big Ten. And they're they're a shell of what they used to be. Now, you could say, okay, you know, Coach Osborne ran his course and they just haven't recovered from from the coach. But I mean, I look at several other examples that you could probably, you know, throw up and just say they're they're not the same once they decide to leave for for greener pastures. You get you get kind of swallowed up in the big machine and you you're competing in a in a bigger bigger swimming pool, bigger pond, a bit, you know, you go from a, from a lake to an ocean. Uh, can you guys potentially see any of that happening with a USC or UCLA? I mean, I know it's kind of kind of crazy to even give yeah. that thought i think it was but, going on oh. before <laughs> right but i mean usc and ucla yeah. aren't what they were 20 years ago already 10 years right. ago when it comes to usc so but yeah look at, i mean but let's be real nebraska wouldn't switch their opportunities right now in a million years do you think they'd rather be in the big 12 dominating it versus being in the big 10 I'm not sure. Maybe that opened no, access. No, no. Well, no, no. Maybe that opened access to a college football playoff where you're getting swallowed up in the Big Ten. You're there, never there gonna make not, it. There's, there might be a chance going forward where it's literally the Big Ten schools and the SEC schools and everybody else is, you know, not even having a chance. Yeah. So I think Nebraska, like, and and now probably USC and UCLA, like, they want to get on the ship that's not sinking, and that's what they're scared of, man. And we're trying to do the same thing at just at a different level. Um, we're trying to get on a on a higher powered ship and a little bit stronger ship as well. But I mean, look at the money is so different between the conferences. Like it's just so different. And and someone and maybe what, what people could say the same thing about San Diego State too, right? Oh, now we're gonna go up to the Pac-12. Are we gonna be overshadowed? Or are we gonna be? You know, we've had these a lot of these eight, nine, ten win seasons lately. Is that going to happen in in the new Pac-12? So the same argument could be made about San Diego State going into the Pac-12. That could be USC going into the Big Ten. Now, now UCLA, in my opinion, um, is going to struggle whatever conference they're in. Like, right. but they have to go. If anyone had to go more, it had to be UCLA. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, they're struggling. Fans, they're struggling. They're, I mean, it's not a great athletic program. Yeah, if you get a chance to go to one of those two conferences, you have to go. Because they are basically, their money is so much far and away bigger than every other conference. There's a clear separation forming, and it's not the power five against the group of five. It's the, the power two, basically. SEC and the Big Ten are basically going to be heads and shoulders above everybody else. Now, what we're, we want to hope to do is like get in that middle class, which is like right now it's the Pac-12, the Big 12 and the ACC. We want to fight to get in there because that's that's where I think that's where if there's going to be a separation from the NCAA and a split, which I don't think is like there. Everybody makes it seem like that's that's going to happen no matter what. If there is a split, it's going to be the upper class and the middle class splitting off from everything else. But I, I don't see that coming anyway. But just for just for the sake of being in a, a better cultural fit conference is the main reason I want to go like the Pac-12. Um, okay, so that's a good question I'll ask Mateo. So for sure, like right, if all things considered, I think we all, we're all in agreement that right now today we would rather be in the Pac-12 than the Big 12. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Right now, as as it is intact right now, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I've always wanted, I mean, the Pac-12 has always been the conference I want San Diego State in. Yeah. You know? I always so, thought, I always thought the, the Big 12, it's like could, trying to put, you know, a triangle into a circle or, or square into a circle, whatever it is, you know, where I think there's a natural fit in the, in the Pac-12. Now, I wouldn't be opposed to being in the Big 12. I think the allure of that possibility when, when it was, when it is floating around our, our consciousness is, is to kind of be that 
grind in the gear, right? You want to be that lone California, Southern California team in the Big 12 and kind of have that distinction about yourself and playing against, you know, some of those teams. But the natural fit is obviously the Pac-12. That's the most natural, you know, uh, recruiting wise, travel wise, everything across the board. But yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't be opposed to being in the, in the Big 12 if it meant you know, advancing and and the pack, let's say the pack 12 just somehow, you know, went outside of San Diego and didn't, didn't want to add a a Southern California, you know, team, which would just be crazy. Okay. So let me ask you guys another question then. Uh, What was I going to ask? Mateo just kept going. (laughs) Let me get a margarita while you think about it. Yeah. I mean, let me go get, I'm going to go get another drink. Okay. So here was the question I was going to ask you guys. All right. well, I mean, I guess it's a question like you guys are on Twitter and you guys see some of these statements too. like, why would like would San Diego State really even want to go to the Pac-12? You know, there's so much. Is there even going to be the Pac-12? If they go there, then what if the conference goes upside down? You know, in a way, advocating for staying in the Mountain West. Did you guys see those or am I the only guy? Yeah. No, I saw them. I saw them. I mean, and it, it was more like, OK, why would you want to jump on a sinking ship? That was which James has kind of mentioned already that it's probably a little bit more stable than people are thinking or giving credit for. But you got to think, like, you'd say, say San Diego State was to take that leap, you know, and they're the only one from the Mountain West Conference that does. Now, are you, if you're JD or you're San Diego State, are you, um, are you requiring, like, a grant of rights deal that it really locks these schools in for, like, a long period of time before you're w- willing to, you know, make the leap because look i mean we, we are going to, have to pay exit fees um we are and it's still not it's still not a it's not gonna be one of the power conferences traditionally so is there any reservation about leaving mountain the mountain west and the and the in the state of the, how the conferences are right now i say no um first of all we're not going to be in the position to demand a, a grant of rights or anything like that the well, other TV contracts coming up. So it's, I mean, you got to lock these schools in or, I mean, or, or, cause I mean, well, that, that, we're that's, that's you can't get bounce at any time, you know, that's, that's between the conference and the TV guy though, like the TV uh, executives, they, they make that decision. But as far as like a grant, grant of rights before we'll join, like screw that. Cause say we join and say it falls apart in two years. Do you think the mountain West is not going to take San Diego state back? Like, come on. I mean, I mean, they may or may not, but, <laughs> I mean, who knows? They could have taken on other other teams at that point as well. But, but there's no team in Southern California, man. <laughs> we are we are the golden goose, man. <laughs> I mean, dude, look at when I mean the grant rights, so dude. San Diego State needs some type of security, right? You don't join a conference and then, you know, four of the teams go to the Big Twelve and two of the teams go to the Big Ten. Is that wow. at that point? Is that is that is that was it I think worth it at that point? I think that'll be written into the conference contract with the TV partner. They'll say like, hey, if we lose teams, you're not going to cut our revenue or it's not going to trigger a renegotiation or something like that. That's what the Big 12 got away with, with Texas and Oklahoma leaving. So, But, so, but a grant of rights comes together when the TV contract is done, right? That's how yeah, those get yeah. established. And yeah. isn't the Pac-12 is up this year or next year? The, the Pac-12, they don't... Um, they have it's not it's like a soft grant of rights but it's uh it's up in 2024 okay so so 2023 I mean, excuse me you don't think like say like SDSU, you, sdsu tomorrow was to go get granted into the pac-12 and then afterwards the tv nego- you don't think the conference should have a strong grant of rights still to kind of lock all the teams in kind of like the acc does yeah i think they do but i don't know if if You'd get Oregon and Washington, like those kind of schools to sign off on it. Though That's the issue. Right. Like you can say, yeah, we're going to do that. But unless Oregon and Washington agree to sign it, what are you going to do? Yeah. So it, I, I don't see a big grant of rights thing. Maybe one for as long as a TV deal is. But uh, I, I don't see a super long one like the ACC. I don't know why the, all those ACC schools signed that one for the ACC. That's crazy. But it's worked out great for them, for the conference. So. Held the conference together, yeah, yeah. for sure. So I, who knows, man? I, we'll see. Like that's it's still like there's still a lot of pieces that are going to be moving around in this summer. 
Um, I, I think, like I said, Notre Dame's the next big one that'll unlock more movement. If Notre Dame decides they're going to try this independent thing for longer, then I think it might slow down for a little bit. All right. So I, then I see, I, I saw a message from your, your boy earlier, the great Flugar guy, oh. where he thinks another shoe's going to drop out West. Um, that was three hours ago. Yeah. So, I mean, I, we, I think that may be related to Notre Dame. Like if Notre Dame is going to make the move, then they're going to, I think they're going to grab another team from out West. And uh, I, I, a lot of people are thinking Oregon, but I think it could be like Utah or Colorado to kind of create like a bridge to California. You don't think if if it was Notre Dame, it'd be like a Stanford? It's possible, but I don't know if Stanford wants to make that move because I think Stanford's comfortable having like a lot of games close. They don't want to have they're like they're not really into sports that much to want to do all that traveling and stuff like that for their non football athletes. They like having the game with Cal, the easy flights to Washington, Washington State, you know, that kind of thing. To me, I, I don't think Stanford has a problem with San Diego State joining the conference. I think it's Berkeley is the, the big one right now that would have a problem. Okay, Matt, I got you. I got a question for you. So when San Diego State joins the Pac-12, how long before uh, we start advocating to kick out Oregon State and Washington State? <laughs> they don't really fit culturally. We need to get some better schools <laughs> Just come in, wreck shop, kick everybody out. We're taking over. <laughs> didn't uh, you guys went up to Corvallis, didn't you? I went to Corvallis, man. I went That's there, cool, and it, you know, it, it's a it's it reminds me a little bit of Colorado State. You know, you you feel like you're in camping. You're at camp. You're at summer camp. You know, the, the <laughs> campus is like about forty five to an hour away from Portland, so you gotta, okay. you know, it's a little bit of a drive. But I have nothing bad to say about Corvallis, but. You know, when you got a bunch of grown dudes yelling out, go Beavs <laughs> uh, at a football game, you know. So, Dude, so I, I'd rather make that drive to or that flight and drive to Corvallis than that flight and drive to Wyoming and that flight and drive oh, to yeah. Air Force. And yeah. <laughs> Any chance we can distance ourselves from like the New Mexico's and the San Jose's and the, you know, the, the Utah states of the conference, it's a good day. <laughs> All right, so hey, can I, can I a couple of things? So I was on an ASU message board today, and like you know how everybody's so dramatic. Oh they're, man, what what they go to when they're dramatic is like, oh my god, we're gonna be in the same conference as San Jose State soon. Like, <laughs> like oh my god, you know, Big Twelve or San Jose State, you know what to do. It's just I love it. Assuming San Diego State is in the Pac-12, big assumption, right? Yeah. Just, we're just playing whatever. The argument I saw was between the other schools that could possibly come with them. And I thought it was, I think it's a fun argument, right? <laughs> yeah. Because you see all these people talk about Boise State, Boise right. State, Boise State. And this is the problem with the people that say Boise State is, and I saw the one poster in particular say, oh, you know, Boise State has beat UNLV or Fresno State at football so many times or something like that. He actually said it to James. I'm like, oh my God, that's such a little picture, right? Like, when you look at the fan base and you think, and you think like you, not in this more central California, but inland and Fresno state's his own thing. But I, if I got to, th- if I'm taking, you know, uh, another school from the mountain West, it's not Boise for me. It's either Fresno state or UNLV. Um, how do you guys, wow. how do you guys feel about that? Wow. 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 Yeah. Like even, so UNLV to me is number one besides San Diego state. <laughs> um, Fresno and Boise, you could argue with me that Boise might be a better fit than Fresno. Like, I could see that argument at least because Fresno has a big following, but it's kind of locked into that uh, Central Valley area. That, but that you know, Central that, Valley is probably larger I mean, than the whole, and <laughs> like Bo- Boise for sure, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, yeah, I can see that. But, um, and, and I wonder how, like, how much, um, Oregon State, Washington State, um, Oregon, you know, Washington would want even a Boise up there, I That's guess. True. That's true. Yeah. I didn't even consider that. It's a regional fit for them, but I mean, I don't know. There, there's not a lot of recruiting going on up there. So, I mean, is there really a, a tug of war for fans? Yeah. So we lack the recruiting there. You lack the market. And look, at, they're the, they, they have a following because they've been great, but they're not going to be great in the new Pac-12. It's going to take some time. You know, you're hoping for mediocre years for the first five years or so. And then, you know, like 
And that is, do they still have that following? Do they still have that? I don't know, but I think Fresno State would. Yeah, I think Fresno State has a following, whether they're good or bad, just because it's it's like one of the few true college towns in San, in California. Right. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, we had a miserable time on a road trip there, but uh, it was still, you could tell it was kind of a college town. Like even at, at the time, they were they were pretty good. It was like one of their first few years in the Mountain West, but they weren't like a, a like the steam machine they were under, uh, you know, the Pat Hill big time days. And there was still like a really good tailgating scene and stuff like that. There you could tell like the everybody had Fresno State stuff and all the shops and stuff like that. So it's one of the few I would consider college towns in California. So yeah, definitely I could see that. Um, yeah, I just Boise, they're so far behind academically. Like if, if Berkeley's turning their nose down at San Diego State, man, Boise's in yeah, a whole yeah. other <laughs> level down. But is it I mean UNLV is as well though, right? No, no, UNLV actually they're building like a medical school. I mean, they got a medical school, but it's still like 270th on the Yeah, yeah. It's it's still way down, but at least they're they're a whole big market. Like presidents can overlook and they have the potential to grow academically, whereas okay. Boise State really has no potential to grow academically. Like obviously they can grow, but they're not gonna they have so far to go to catch up that they're not even the same stratosphere. But tell me this. I mean, are, are all these factors you guys are naming, are, what's the main criteria for, for these poaching of teams? I mean, I, I know it kind of varies for each conference, right? So with the Pac-12 in this scenario kind of being whittled down a little bit, I mean, what would be I, I, the, the primary factors of that, you think? I, to, to me personally, I think ap- academics has slipped a little bit in terms of like their priority. Yeah. But I still think it's a priority for the because you got to think it's presidents that make the decision. Right. The, the presidents of Berkeley, Stanford, Oregon, Washington, those guys are the ones making the call and they all have different things that they prefer. But I think still overwhelmingly academics is important to them. But I think other than academics, I think the most important thing is probably market and uh, like brand strength. And I think that's the only thing that keeps Boise in the conversation is their brand strength. I think um, what I think what the Pac-12 needs to look for is uh, bringing some type of identity back, and that's one of the parts that I think, like San, when you like out of San Diego State, okay, we're back, we're back to representing the West Coast, we're back to getting to our fans. Um, yeah. When you start going to Utah and Colorado, you kind of going outside of what the Pac-12 is actually really about, because you got to remember California um, and the West Coast in general. It's us against the world. Like we're the forgotten group. We're the part of the, the country that we all got to stick together. You know, we could try to dabble into the central stuff like Utah and Colorado. But the, the fact is, is we got to win our own first. And we've mentioned that on, on, on podcasts before. It's like invest in what the West Coast, invest in the West Coast first. Now with UCLA and USC gone, hopefully they don't try to abandon that thought process and try to go once again, go to like an Oklahoma State or, or Houston or whatever um, school there may be. I hopefully they invest back into like representing, let's all get, everybody on the West Coast, us against the world, let's go, let's go show them that we're the best part of the country. And actually live up to the name of the conference, which is the <laughs> PAC, the Pacific yeah. Conference, Pacific you know? Athletic Conference. <laughs> I mean, there's a, there's a lot to that. You know, look at the Mountain West. Yeah, it's got the Mountain and the West, but you know it really has been dictated by the by the by the range schools yeah yeah they, they've always voted as a block together and that's what's hurt san diego state and the other western teams in dealing with them is you know san diego state when they when they made the initial move to the mountain west from the old whack is san diego state should have fought harder to get like fresno to come with them um but they didn't they just said hey this is our chance to get the hell out of this fucked up whack yeah and Let's just jump on this, like kind of what USC and UCLA are doing, but to a lower level, obviously. They're like, let's jump on this gravy train and get the hell out of here. <laughs> well, I'm calling out Jake Crane on Twitter, at Jake Crane. Him and Sons of Monty had a little back and forth today because, yeah, he put the question out on who are the first two teams from the Mountain West that should make that jump to the Pac-12. And he picked Fresno and Boise. Like, <laughs> how, how do you, on any planet, yeah, I don't care where you're from. Like, if you do not have San Diego State number one on your list from the Mountain West, you clearly do not have a grasp on the Mountain West. 
Dude, I, I, I was- that guy, I, I actually call that guy an idiot because <laughs> of, of his response back to you, where he said he knows more than all of us combined or something like that. It was just so, it was so dumb, you know? And like, it actually, his response back to your, to your comment made him look stu- more dumb than he already was with the, his initial tweet. Dude, I, I was pleasantly surprised by how many people with blue check marks who said the first call you guys got to make is San Diego State and this team, San Diego yep. State, Boise, San Diego, like S- San Diego State, like started trending on my, yeah, on my. Uh, I know like, it was so, it was so <laughs> awesome. There was a good hour of greatness, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, all these like writers, sports writers and stuff were like, the first call you make is San Diego State, right? <laughs> it's the most logical fit is the Pac-12. We'll say it over and over and over again. Yeah, you look at you look at a map of the Pacific 12 conference right now, and there's a big gaping hole in Southern California. And there's one FBS team that plays there that can help kind of get that back. So, I mean, it makes too much sense. So hopefully... Hopefully they don't overthink it and just make the easy call, but we'll see, man. Okay, we'll see. okay, so I'll ask you guys another question. When Oklahoma and Texas left or did this announced that they were leaving, the wheels started moving fast to get some schools in back into that conference to replace them. How quick do things start happening um, in the Pac-12 right now? Yeah, that's just what I was thinking about. His, historically they've been slow to react to stuff but they have a new that's why they're in the position they're in right exactly but they have a new conference commissioner so we'll see i, I know they had meetings today this is this is like his uh chance to prove his worth you know he's got to get these presidents in line and be like hey we got to do this we got to do it now we got to act fast otherwise they're gonna get left behind again and there's a reason they went from being like really one of the big power like it was them in the the uh, Big Ten were kind of like the, the movers and shakers of college football with the Rose Bowl, like the most important bowl game. And now the Rose Bowl has like fallen, like the, the Rose Bowl is yeah. going to be like meaningless now. Well, 2024 and, is supposed to be the year that USC and UCLA officially make that jump to the Big Ten. That's going to be here very, very, very fast. So basically, it's just one more year, right? So they're going to yeah. they're going to play the uh, 2022 well, so- and 2023, I guess. So I guess it's two yeah, years. Two years. This year and next year. But, and then like next year, it's like, you got to have plans in place. You got to be, they've got to make decisions. Fast. They've got to move fast unless they're, unless they're going to stay at 10. And if they stay at 10, you might, then I'll agree with those people that say the Pac 12 is done. If they don't make a decision pretty rapidly, I'll agree with those saying, you know, the Pac 12 is dead. They actually have to make the decision just to, just to stay a viable conference. I mean, yeah. you get to a point where you lose you lose too many and you're on par with Mountain West at that point, you know, because the teams that you do have now they were raised because of the conference. Now they don't have that conference, you know, Ooh. elitism that they that they have or the conference brand that they have. Yeah. Now you're getting, you're you're dealing with a, a Mountain West. that already had there already has some good schools in a subpar conference, you know, so. And I believe they uh they're they're gonna start negotiating their TV contract next year, so they got to make a decision fast. So they can their TV partners will know what they're dealing with and all that kind of thing. And okay, yeah, so maybe. so from worst to first in the Pac-12, which schools are are just taking a crap in their pants the most right now? I mean, it's got to be Oregon State, right? Well, here's the thing about Oregon State. Is they don't have the cool thing about Oregon State and Washington State is they have no decisions to make, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? I, I'm kind of always jealous in the Mountain West when I see like a Wyoming in there, right? <laughs> they don't, they know what they are and they know what they're going to be, and they're gonna just going to, you know, deal with what they have to do, deal with. But like in Arizona or ASU, they're in a huge market, right? Yeah. And they have to make, they have to nail this decision, you know, and, it, mm, and, yep. and, where Oregon State and Washington State, worst case scenario, the, they get dissolved and then they come, they go into the Mountain West. Whereas really, really is where they the, should be, anyways, right? They That's fit right with on. the Wyoming's and they fit with the Boise States and the Colorado States. I mean, it's like really a cultural and almost ge- geographical fit as well. So, them, no sweat, dude. I mean, they're not they're a like power. Whatever. 
<laughs> wherever the wind, wherever the winds of college realignment take them, that's where they're gonna be. Yeah, right. Yeah. Now, but, like, now, like a cow. They. That now they're they're like, what's cow gonna do? They're they had major debt with their stadium right now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, Cal is the one sweating the most bullets right now because they are so deep in debt for their stadium and their facility upgrades that they they need the Pac-12 to work out or they need to make sure they go to the, a Big 12 that's better than the Pac-12 as it currently stands. So, yeah, they, they, they're the ones. And James, and that's when that president swallows his pride, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all hate those big dumb rednecks now, but when you're <laughs> – when you have no choice, yeah, <laughs> he'll go rub elbows with the with the Lauren Boberts and the Marjorie Taylor Greens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who after Cal do you think would it be those Arizona schools, Arizona State, Arizona? You know what? Probably Utah. Oh, because Ooh. Utah thought they were, they, you know, they they burned all their bridges on the way out of the Mountain West. They were like. <laughs> Lighting that bridge on fire, like woo! See you guys. But you, don't, but you don't think Utah is a natural fit for the Big Twelve, though? Yeah, but BYU may say no. We don't want Utah in the conference with us. And and, <laughs> and and you know how 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 all these schools always have their pride, right? They don't want to chase. They don't want to look. They don't want to go back. Feel like they're going backwards now because they they were the king of Utah for a bit there. Oh, you know? they had that over BYU's <laughs> head for over a decade, <laughs> and they beat them for over a decade now. Tables have turned. You're telling me BYU is not going to hold a bit of a grudge for that? Come on. <laughs> but I do think BYU would want them in there. Yeah. yeah. Ultimately, I think they do. Because it would be like, oh, come back to daddy. You know, like, it would be like. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that rivalry would, would gain a lot, a lot more prominence again, I think, you know, and keep yeah. that thing going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe Colorado because they they burned a lot of bridges going out of the Big Twelve when they left the Big Twelve. They were like, "Screw you guys! Yeah. All our fans are in California anyway." Like, right, but in. that Big Twelve isn't the same Big Twelve now. Yeah, you know, like I think their main problem was Texas, and they're gone. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, Texas, um, Missouri, Nebraska, there, uh, Nebraska, Oklahoma. I mean, it's a brand new. I mean. I think I would love to be in any conference Colorado's in, honestly. Yeah. That's like a, that's a, that's a school I'd love to be aligned with. Arizona schools, man. I want to be with the Arizona schools and the California schools. Like, cause that's, that's the Pac-12 what it should be, man. Is all the California schools, all the Arizona schools, Oregon, Washington. Tell, talk to me about Oregon guys, because I mean, that's a big brand. That's Nike. That's Phil Knight money. That's, you know, they, they've done some pretty big things on the national scene, but they've, they've never really ascended to the levels of a USC as bad as they really want to be. But they're out here on the outside looking in. Same could be said for, for UW. They have a, a lot of history, but they, they are obviously going through a big transition in their football program. How do those two programs sit? Because they're, they're on the top of the, of the Pac-12 now, but they've got to be standing on some very shaky ground. I think they're okay, pretty okay. comfortable. Yeah. Because they're they know they're like probably the first choice. If if okay, the Pac 12 okay. is gonna get poached, they're probably on top of the heap. And look at Oregon, if they wanted to, they could go independent and they have a pretty big brand where Ooh. they're uh like people are mentioning Stanford going independent. And I couldn't, I mean they say it because they're more school based, you know, but Oregon, Oregon has a brand, Oregon has a following, Oregon. I mean, the only, the, what hurts Oregon is kind of what has hurt San Diego State is our location, you know? Like, do does Maryland want to go send their basketball team to Oregon, you know? Or, yeah. like, I mean, that it's tough. Now, I don't think you could compare Oregon to USC, and that's why Maryland would love to take send their basketball team to, to L.A., you know? Yeah. And, and that's another thing, too, is, like, Oregon, how much of their roster is from California? They want to lose that California connection. I mean, if they go to the Big Ten, they'll still have it. But if, like, they're not going to leave the Big tw- to the Big Twelve, they're not going to leave unless Cal, Cal and USC, or, or, excuse me, Stanford come with them, because it's you know seventy percent of their roster is from California. So I, I think they're better served being in the Pac-12. If they don't go to the Big Ten with USC and UCLA, they're better served staying in a reconstituted Pac-12. 
And they're another one I don't think would have a problem with San Diego State now in this situation. Right. Yeah. I do. I love looking at some of these idiots and on, on Twitter. So there's a Barstool Mountain West thing. And they, and he created a, um, a Mountain West with a Pacific Vision and a Mountain Division. And in the Pacific Division, it's uh, Cal, Oregon, Stanford, <laughs> Washington. <laughs> as, if, like, the, as if the Pac-12 decided to commit suicide. Dude, you know? <laughs> and they, they all just say, no, what, we're going to go to the Mountain West now. No, no matter what happens with the Pac-12, they're doing the poaching of the Mountain West. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not the other way around. Like Wyoming is not dictating whether they're going to have the only thing Oregon. that would change it is if the Pac-12 completely dissolves and all that's left is Oregon State and Washington State. Then yeah. yes, I could see those two teams going to the Mountain West, but that's it. <laughs> Otherwise, I just want look. I want to be in a conference. I've said this before to you guys. I think Matt kind of laughed at it. I don't want to be with Utah State anymore. I don't want to be with Air Force anymore. I don't want to be with New Mexico anymore. I don't want to be with Wyoming. Give me some UNLV. Give me some Fresno, Fresno State, you know, but in Boise State. But come on, I mean, we got to be in we got to be in bigger cities. We got to we got to be more. None of this whole bunk, you know, give cowboy, give me- fucking, you know, these these schools that we have nothing in common with. None of it. Conference road trips we can drive to within six hours, you know? I, I don't think that's too much to ask, you know? And, dude, and how much better are we playing if we don't have to, to make these stupid road trips to Logan, Utah, you know, to Wyoming? Dude, even try flying into, um, from here to Fort Collins. It's not the easiest thing to do. <laughs> right? like, yeah, that was and, kind of a pain, flying into Denver and then driving to Fort Collins. So, I mean, like, I just want to be in a, in a geographical, like, alignment with, with the rest of the schools and conference and, you know, and, I mean, hopefully it comes. I'm, I'm praying. I, this was a crazy day for me. It made my work day go by so fast. <laughs> okay, from, who the, from the Mountain West now, who has a chance for, I mean, we all kind of know who has a chance to move up in any sense, right? But w- now that the tables are kind of set in where we're at now. Is that even worth talking? Not really worth talking about any of the Mountain West schools, right? Because, I mean, it's really just us, Fresno, and Boise that, that are on anybody's uh, radar. I mean, UNLV. I think, I think, the, the I think we're the West, only ones talking about UNLV for the most part. I think the Mountain West are um, the haves and have-nots, really. Because I think there's a group, because you forgot to mention Colorado State. Colorado State, yeah. I think they could be in. Some may say Air Force for, you know. The national you know, brand or whatever. For the most overrated brands <laughs> in college sports is the, the academies. But, um, I mean, I think it's the haves and have nots. Like the teams that you would expect would have a chance are going to have the chance, you know. Boise, uh, San Diego State, um, UNLV. And the UNLV is market size and stadium and the facilities, basketball tradition. They are, and, and they already have it. The Pac-12 spends a lot of time in, in Vegas. They have their conference championship uh, football game in there. They have all their tournaments in there for basketball. Um, and I think I think they're talking know, about moving their conference headquarters there too, dude. Yeah. So there, I mean, there's something there with UNLV. They don't deserve it because of what they've done on the field and in the court. But hey, I mean, they're and look at another check mark against them is it seems like every major league team is moving to Vegas. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All the pro sports. Yeah, and there, I think there's a chance you know he gets a little bit more forgotten. But who knows, man? If they start winning, they're they're really like that. That basketball program had crazy following when they were on their run under Tarkanian. So, yeah, if if they can get on a run, they'll support them. But yeah, but that only took national championship. <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad we don't play either USC or UCLA in football this year. Uh, Fresno gets a chance, uh, a crack at USC this season. We get, we get UCLA next year, though, right? That's what J.D. Wicker was saying. Yeah. So, yeah, 2023, UCLA in San Diego, November or September 9th, excuse me. Yeah, so we do have them next year in the Snapdragon. That should be lovely. And the return game is 2026 at UCLA. Oh, see, that's awesome. 
because now it's a Big Ten game. <laughs> a Big Ten game. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> we got a uh, Oregon State next year at Oregon State too. So <laughs> it's kind of crazy if you think about it. If we do go to the Big, uh, the Pac-12, we'd have some scheduling issues. Yeah, because a lot of our out of conference are are the Pac-12. 2024, we have Washington State at home and Cal at Cal. So those would yeah, be the opportunities. Eight. <laughs> Damn. I wonder what you do in that case. So what? You keep those games as conference games, and then you back out. Then you schedule Mountain West teams. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think you, that's what you do, right? Yeah, you you find a couple other teams to play. It's always New Mexico State, actually. That's <laughs> everybody schedules. I, I'm always Wonderful. down for helping out that program, man. That that program needs help staying afloat. So I'm always down to help those guys out. So, Matt, dude, I think we've nailed this podcast. It's actually one of our better ones, I think. <laughs> Leave some bullshit in there, though, you know, a little bit. Yeah, this one for sure, because it's just we're just talking. It's just raw. This isn't this is an emergency podcast. It's crazy how much like, like Uh-oh. you get affected by what you see on social media. Right. You know, it kind of like brings in some uh, some the wildcats coming to say, oh, we got an intruder. <laughs> we got an intruder. <laughs> Dude, that's a that's a that's a conference mate. Yeah. <laughs> She's like bear down. Do we got any? Do we got any uh, score predictions already made by Miss Wildcat over there? Uh, forty three seven, y'all. <laughs> I'll take that. Also, I have to stay with him, so I don't want to get kicked out. <laughs> See, see, James, dude, Arizona deserves to be in um, the, the Big 12 with when I just heard y'all. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh-huh. Y'all. <laughs> All right. They're having way too much fun in here. Can I have him back now? <laughs> yeah, you guys, yeah, you guys are good. We're, about We're good. Back. We're almost dead. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Well, that was a good score prediction. That was a good score prediction. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's, she's come to terms with they're going to get a railing in that game. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you taking a couple of times for this emergency episode. Hopefully there'll be more emergencies because, uh, man, today was a whirlwind. It was fun. It was hectic. Yeah, I, we all survived it, though. And, you know, we live to fight another day. Want to see where the ass chicks end up in the next, hopefully in the next year. This During the season, I want to get an announcement. Like, during the season, that would be amazing. So that's it for this episode, guys. It's a, it was an emergency. Thank you guys for joining us and, and checking us out. Make sure you check out the online store, sonsofmontezuma.com slash shop. All the new products we have going on there are for, perfect for summertime. James, Dan, thank you guys for your time. Until next time, sonsofmontezuma.com. Go Aztecs. Yeah. Go Pac-12 Aztecs. Pac-12 Aztecs, yeah. <laughs> Later, guys. Later. Jesus.